Friends, the Lord be with you. Thank you. Welcome in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We've got a full day of worship today, and it's good. We have gathered on this day as God's baptized people, that we might lift up our prayers and our praise and our thanks, that we might come and hear his word for us on this day that we might trust his presence with us in this place, and that we might go from here into Fort Collins and Windsor and indeed Timnath, carrying his good news and his ministry in our hands and on our hearts. Dear friends, you are welcome in this place. As we uh, gather our hearts and our minds for worship, I would ask if there are any announcements to be shared for the good of the community. Lorene? This Wednesday is the Safe Talk that our church is hosting. It's about suicide awareness. It's from five to nine. We really could use at least five more people. It includes chicken dinner. If you would like to come, it's worth your time. I wish I'd had this in 98. I would have lost a friend, I think. Hmm. Thanks, Lorraine. Safe Talk this Wednesday, and it's free. I have a couple announcements. Uh, one is that we are having a youth gathering next Sunday after worship from 11.30 to 1 p.m. So if you are of that age or you know somebody, have a friend of that age, they should come out. It's going to be fun. Um, also want to bring to your attention that on June 5th, Pentecost Sunday, uh, you are invited to stay after worship for a good old-fashioned potluck. That means we invite you to bring a dish to share, uh, and we will stay and have lunch together. So we'll move from this table where we feast on the gifts of God to those tables where we share our gifts with one another and celebrate the gift of the Spirit. So put that on your calendar and be there for that. Seeing no other announcements, let's... Continue in worship then by preparing our hearts and our minds with the discipline of silence and with the ringing of the bell.
Thank you, Joan. Always beautiful. Now let us have the call to worship. Let all the earth resound with this song. Christ is risen from the dead, conquering death by death, and on those great bestowing life. Alleluia. Christ is risen. The opening prayer will be holy and triune God in whom we know the maker of all things seen and unseen by the savior of all both near and far by your spirit enable us to worship your divine majesty so that with all the company of heaven we may magnify your glorious name saying holy 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 Praise and glory be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Now, rise if you are able, and we will sing Good Christians All Rejoice and Sing in your hymnals 111. The call to worship. The risen Jesus said that repentance and forgiveness is to be proclaimed in his name to all. So let us repent that we may hear God's grace and forgiveness over us once again. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Jesus Christ, risen Master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted your heavenly kingdom. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us.
the assurance of grace, and then the passing of the peace. From Ephesians 2, 4 through 7. This is the good news, God being rich in mercy. Because of the great love for which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly place of Christ Jesus so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. Believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. And God has given us peace in Christ. Let us share the peace with each other. The peace of Christ be with you.
of all of them. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. The prayer for illumination this morning. Heavenly Father, your spirit raised Jesus from the dead. Your spirit inspired the prophets and the writers of the scriptures. Your spirit draws us to Christ and helps us to know him as Lord. So send your Holy Spirit now that we may know the presence of our living Lord. Hear his good news for us and be raised with him to new life. Amen. The New Testament reading today is from Revelation 7, 9 through 17. After this, I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all the tribes, and all the people, and languages from all over, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out, saying in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, who are these robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and have made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night with his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more, 
and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of water of life. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Thanks be to God. And now, Mr. Greg, I call upon you to bring our beautiful little children up so that you can give them the message. <laughs> Good morning. Hi. Wow, look at everybody. Good group. Hi, there's a little one. Wow. This is fun. So, Jesus had a lot of followers, didn't he? But he had some special followers. And do you know what they're called? That'd be kind of a big word. What? Apostles? Oh my goodness. Yes. That's right. Very good. Bible. Mm hmm And in today's Bible message, Jesus told his, he gave his apostles a command. And it, it's called the Great Commission. That's a big word, isn't it? It's a big word. But you know what it really means? It's to spread the good news of Jesus, to spread the good news. And back in, in that time, it was harder to do that. And so they worked hard to help us, to, that we're able to spread the good news a little easier. So instead of a burden, it's a blessing. So when we spread the good news, it's a blessing in these days. And, and I think that because we're spreading the good news and it's a blessing, that it calls for some celebration, uh, maybe even some fanfare. Yeah. Like, like a dance. Yeah, look at Leanne's face when I said that. Huh? Yeah. So. Could you step up here a minute, please? <laughs> so we're just going to do a couple of, of things here. And, and she's probably going to show me. So let's do a, let's do a California twirl to, to everyone out there so that we can spread the good news. How's that? Yeah. And we go, how about turn your partner by the right? Oh, that is so much fun. Run around your guy. Okay, very good. Thank you. That's all. We have others. Yeah, but there's also, we can, we can help spread the news in other ways too, like trumpets. Now, you know what I'm going to bring out here? This. The last time I did this, it sounded like a, a duck that was gargling. So let's, let's see if we can make, this, that make it work this time. This is a shofar, okay? We'll see. If it sounds like a duck again, forgive me. It worked at home. I'm gonna have to get the trumpet blown. Sorry guys. <laughs> anyway, that's fun, isn't it? Yeah. It's even more fun to come up here and make a fool of yourself with that. Yeah. Okay. So, but there's one thing that you guys can do as kids to spread the good news. Let me show you. Look here. It's Vacation Bible School. Kinds of fun things we're going to do in vacation Bible school. 
Yeah, see it? A study is called heyday. So that's one way that you can tell your friends. Go out and spread the good news. Yeah, and that we're going to have vacation Bible school on. That's right. So tell all your friends to spread the good news to come to our vacation Bible school. Let's have a prayer. Heavenly Father, we're, we're grateful for the, the apostles that came before us who did all of the hard work so that our work, our work in these days is easier or we can turn that burden into a blessing and carry in the good news. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, Craig. This is the good news. Christ is risen. He is risen and during the 40 days between his resurrection and his ascension, Jesus appeared to his disciples by many convincing proofs, showing up to them and teaching them about the kingdom of God. So says Acts 1. And so the church has continued to believe that the risen Jesus continues to reveal himself to us today. Now, by the power of his spirit, until the day we will indeed see him face to face and be made like him. So during this Easter season, this Easter tide, we've been listening to stories of Jesus' resurrection appearances so that we might learn to be attentive to his presence now. Uh, we've heard how Jesus appeared to his disciples on the road in the Gospel of Luke and behind those locked doors in the Gospel of John. Now, listen to this commission that the risen Jesus gives from the Gospel of Matthew. Listen carefully and listen well, for this too is God's word to us from the book we love. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him. But some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. Remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is the word of the Lord, we say. Thanks be to God. Holy God, once again, we lay our lives open before your open word. And we ask that now in the power of your spirit, you would make this a word for each and every one of us here today. But even more so, that you would make this a way that we hear the voice of the living word, our risen Lord, and know his presence with us now. We pray this in his name, and together we say, Amen. In about 35, I'll say 35 so that you don't run, 35 minutes, you're going to do something. I, I believe this. In about 35 or 40 minutes, you all are going to do the same thing. I think this is true. In about 35 to 40 minutes, you're going to do something. You are going to leave. Actually, you should stay because there's a brief congregational meeting afterwards, and then there's a reception for new members. Then you're going to leave. But in 35 to 40 minutes, you're all going to do something. You're going to leave. 
You're going to depart. You're going to go. Out to lunch, maybe, or back to your homes. You're going to go. Uh, to finish some chores before the rest of the week or to get ready for the last week of school or the beginning of summer, you're going to go. That's right. <laughs> Out to Timnath, to Windsor, to Fort Collins, you're going to go. And when you do, your going is in some way meant to mirror and share that of the disciples, to whom Jesus says, what? Go. Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. In about 35 minutes, you're going to do something. You're going to go. And when you do, you are meant to go like those disciples with this Word. It's been called the Great Commission, hanging on your hearts and being worked out in your words and in your hands. That commission, that commission to be disciples who make disciples, calling others to believe and belong and behave according to the commands of Jesus, is not just a word for missionaries sent overseas to come and witness to us. It's been used for that. That's not all it's for. That word from Jesus is not a word and a command and a commission just for the 11 disciples way back then, something they could do and go and do. That word and that commission is meant for all disciples in every time and in every place, which means it is a word for you. Jesus says, go. And that commission to call others to believe and belong and behave is something you can carry this week joyfully and faithfully. And I think it's something that we can do particularly as we pay attention to the bookends of the commission and the context of your calling. The bookends of the commission and the context of your calling. I love books. If you've gotten to know me a little bit, you might know this, that I love books. Uh, I have books stacked up on my shelves and on my desk. It's always cluttered here in my study. There are books at home. There are books I've read one, two, three times over, books I haven't read but can't wait to, books I'll never read but can't get rid of. <laughs> to Annie's dismay, I love books. You might read more books than I do in a week, but I love them. What I don't really use ever are bookends. You know these things? Some people have fancier ones. These were just left in my study. But bookends, those little tools that are meant to order your bookshelf so that the books can stay in place and not fall over, so that everything isn't cluttered in between, so that everything is held and easy to reach for. I love books, but I don't really use bookends. But Jesus kind of does here. Jesus gives some bookends to the commission. And just like these bookends are meant to bring order to chaos and hold everything together, Jesus' bookends help to hold the commission together, to give it order and to make it something that we can reach for from the shelf of his life. In fact, something that's offered to us. There are bookends. Here's the first one. There are two. The first bookend Jesus gives is this. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. This is in verse 17, 18. Jesus came and said to them, All authority, exousia in the Greek, power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. That's how the commission begins. Now, if you're somebody who has recently gone to a graduation or will be going to one, there is a good chance you heard a graduation speech. And there's a chance you maybe heard that well-worn, overused motif at the speech that goes something like this. Graduates, follow your dreams. 
Do what you love. Change the world because the power is now where? In your hands. And they quickly learned that's not quite how it works. <laughs> but we still sell the dream, right? The power's in your hands. On the other hand, if you're someone who's been around the block of life a few times, you might know what it is to have power abused. And you might have seen the abuse of somebody in authority, personally or in the life of somebody else. And so you don't say the power's in your hands. You actually are afraid of power in people's hands. And you make sure it's not in the wrong hands. You can be a dreamer who thinks the power's in your hands. You can be somebody whose dreams have been taken or you've been hurt and you keep the power from people's hands. Still again, in 2022, you might look around the world and be a little cynical of how things are going. And you might say all this talk about power in people's hands is an illusion. The pendulum is not swinging between haves and haves nots. It's just not swinging at all. There is no order. There is no power except chaos and disorder. And guess what? The best you can do is learn to cope with it. Everything's falling apart. You can be somebody who's a dreamer who thinks the power's in your hands. You can be somebody who's been hurt and keeps the power from people's hands. You can be somebody who's cynical and says, power ain't in anybody's hands. Deal with it. And all of those are simplified ways, but they are ways that people look and engage the world right now. That's what you've heard. And the gospel offers a different vision. The gospel says something else. The gospel says there actually is somebody who has the power in his hands to change the world. And he is not somebody to be feared because he in fact has used all his power to the point of laying it down for you on the cross out of love. And from the very beginning of time, his desire has been to look at the chaos in your life and in the world and gather it under the loving rule of the Father, Jesus Christ. Christianity 101 says, Jesus now in his resurrection is in the place of power and rule and authority over all things over all the world, over your life. In his resurrection, like a victorious king, Jesus has defeated the powers of sin and death and the devil, and now has been put in a place of authority at the right hand of the Father. Paul says in Ephesians 1, far above all rule and power and dominion and above every name that is named, which is to say there is no power in heaven or on earth or under the earth and no person in power that is greater than Jesus Christ. In the most simplistic way, he's got the whole world in his hands, the powers in his hands, which does not mean, by the way, that the world in his hands is now as it should be, right? We can look around and see that. But it does mean that he has been put in a position of authority to bring the world as it should be. Here's the kicker. How does Jesus exercise his authority? Bingo. Through disciples like you. This is what Jesus says in the commission. All authority, all power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, because that's true, because that's the reality, go. He doesn't say just go. He says all the power is mine and you're with me. And out of that relationship, you carry the commission, which does not mean you can carry the commission to be a disciple who makes disciples, calling others to believe and belong and behave because you've got charisma. You can do it because you've got the perfect plan for the congregation. You can do it because you've got a purpose-driven life. Oh, no. You can carry the commission, Jesus says, because when you go out those doors, you go under his authority, sharing his power, representing his reign wherever you go as church. So the Christians 
who are praying and witnessing in Ukraine are representing the reign of Christ. And the Christians who are working for healing in Buffalo represent the reign of Christ. And the Christians who are looking to repair and reconcile divisions in our own state and in our own town, even the one that seems small but is important between Old Timnath and New Timnath, they represent the reign of Christ. They don't go just, hey, I'm gonna do something for Jesus. They go sharing his power and representing his very reign. Which means, on the one hand, we have to be a people of deep humility. A people who say, Lord, all our best plans and all our best intentions for our congregation, for our community, they're nothing if you will not be at work because the power is yours. Deep humility, and yet at the very same time, it means what? We have to be a people of boldness who say, Lord, the power is in your hands, but you send us. And you say to us, go. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, because that's true, you can go. That's the first bookend in the commission. Here's the second. Remember. Remember, remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. If the first bookend is a promise of Jesus' power and authority strengthening us, the second is a promise of his presence. I am with you. There's this challenge that I will often give to my son Ephraim in the mornings. When we're trying to get out the door, I'll say to Ephraim, okay, buddy, I'm going to set a timer, and you have to try and get dressed before it beeps, right? This is fun for him, and it's helpful for us. So I'll set the timer on the microwave, and then I'll say to him, okay, ready? One, two, three, go. And Ephraim feverishly tries to get his pajamas off and get his clothes for the day on before that timer beeps. And usually, we're working on this, usually I don't have to help him right? It's a fun challenge for him. Now, what could Jesus have said at this point? Jesus Christ, the living God who has been born for us and lived our life faithfully and died on the cross for the forgiveness of sins, reconciling us to the Father and to one another, and having been raised in the power of the Spirit, could have said to his disciples, okay, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you, and I'll see you at the end of the age when the timer beeps. Right? This is the challenge. Let's see how you do. Hands off. That's what Jesus could say. It's a challenge for you to go and do. I'm not going to be present in it, but I'll be waiting for you at the end. But that isn't what Jesus actually says. We act like that sometimes, I think. We believe that sometimes. Like Jesus has sort of left the mission to us. He's walked out the door and says, see you someday. But that isn't what the gospel actually says. Jesus gives this promise, this bookend. Go, make disciples, and remember while you're going, I am with you. I am with you. I am with you. If the first bookend is a promise of his power and authority providing what we need to go forward, the second is a promise of his presence. I am with you. His presence, which we know today, now, through the Holy Spirit, the personal presence of Christ, we'll hear about this in a few weeks, and his presence, which we experience in the communion of saints, which means here. This is important. When Jesus says, remember, I am with you, that you is actually not singular. Did you know that? I don't think it's wrong to think of Jesus saying, I'm with you, Russ. But it's not singular here. What Jesus actually says is, I'm with you all. It's plural. Or as we said in Virginia, I'm with y'all. That's literally what Jesus says here, which suggests that if you are someone who needs to know the presence of Jesus, who wants to say, where can I be in his presence? You can look around you right now and say, right here in this space, with these flawed and faithful sinners and saints, 
the place where Jesus chooses to abide, the place where Jesus chooses to reveal himself, the place where Jesus chooses to be present is in the company of saints, the body of believers, because it is the place where his word continues to be spoken, where his sacrament continues to be shared, and where discipleship continues to happen. Jesus says, I'm with y'all here in this place. It is a promise of his presence. Power and presence. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Remember, I am with you. These are the two bookends that hold the commission together and hand it over to us as something that we can take and believe and carry joyfully and faithfully in the context of our calling, which is the last thing I just want to draw your attention to, the context of our calling. Admittedly, when Jesus says all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, literally all the Gentile world, the whole world, that is huge and maybe a little abstract. Like, how do you make disciples of the world, of all nations? How are you going to go into the whole world? So let me ask you, where are you right now? This is a live question. <clears throat> where are you? Here, okay. Cookie? Timnith, great. Anybody else want to give an answer? Colorado in the church? So nobody's saying Galilee, which is where the disciples were, right? And nobody's saying the world, the cosmos. You're saying Timnath, you're saying Colorado, you're saying here. And guess what? Just as you're here in Timnath, there are Christians praying the Psalms in bombed out buildings in Ukraine and working for healing in Buffalo and seeking to reconcile divisions wherever they come up, which all of which is testimony that the commission has been carried forward into the world that the power and presence of Jesus has propelled the witness of disciples to carry the good news into the world. But that didn't happen by Peter coming to Timnath, right? Has anybody met the apostle Peter? No, it happened because Peter and John and Matthew were witnesses, disciples in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria. And then the word spread on trade routes to India and Spain and then, for good reasons and ill, up to England and Ireland and down to Kenya and Uganda and to places like Jamestown and Philadelphia and Detroit and Timnath, community by community, place by place, person by person, which means the way that the commission is carried forward to the nations is by knowing your neighbors. The way the good news is spread globally is by being faithful locally. This is the context of your calling. Right here, right out there. This is where you carry this commission from God. So here's the deal. And I'm hoping I'm not going to be picking on somebody here. In a week, there's going to be two baptisms. Opal and Otto Pacheco. And I am so excited. And I know you are too. And there are going to be two baptisms for this reason. Their parents, Steve and Robin, are disciples of Jesus who want to make disciples, including of their kids. They want their children to know they're not just their children, but they're children of the living God. They want them to be disciples. Go, make disciples. So we're going to baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And then I'm going to ask you to make a promise. And the promise is basically that you will teach them everything Jesus has commanded. The promise is that you will be the people who will nurture them in the way of Jesus. Basically, you're promising to carry the commission of Christ forward here. Make disciples, baptize them, teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you with Opal, with Otto. And when you think of it in that context, on those terms, it's not abstract anymore. It's not some vague idea of going into the world. It is a present and pressing reality that causes us to ask, so how? Are you, Jesus, equipping us with your power and present with us so that we can nurture these children 
in your way. And not just these children, but my children and your friend and the neighbor who wonders, would I be accepted at Timnath Prez? And the people at the hospital who help you and the coworkers who come to you with life concerns, and in all those places, in all those times, with all those people, you go as disciples. Called to make disciples, inviting others to believe and belong and follow the way of Christ. So now not in 30 minutes, but you know, I won't even say, in some time, you're going to do something. You're going to go. And when you do, you go held together by these bookends, by these promises of Jesus' power and provision so that you might carry his word on your heart and work it out through your hands this week. I wonder where he will send you to be those disciples. Pay attention as you go. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Spirit. Amen. Speaking of disciples, I would invite those folks who are becoming members of Timnath Presbyterian to come and join me around the font. Don't be shy, don't be shy. Phyllis? Oh, sure, yeah. On behalf of the session, I present Vicki Dean, Paul and Linda Jacobs, Laura Mitchell, Annie Itterock, and Mary Lou Zacheis to be received into the membership of this congregation. In baptism, you were claimed by God, marked as Christ's own forever, and joined to his body by the Holy Spirit. You come to us then not as strangers, but as friends in Christ and members of the household of God. We rejoice that you now desire to join this congregation in the worship and mission of the church. Hear these words from scripture. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. So just as in your baptism, you uh, were made to belong to the one body of Christ, I ask you now, as you become members here, to reaffirm the baptismal promises that you made or that were made over you by someone who loved you. Trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world? If so, say, I do. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Lord and Savior, trusting in his grace and power? Do you? Will you be Christ's faithful disciple here, obeying his word and showing his love? Will you? And as members of the body of Christ, I invite all of us to stand in body or spirit and let us reaffirm together the faith into which we were baptized. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Having professed our faith and as the body, I ask you, will you be faithful members of this congregation, Timnath Presbyterian, sharing in its worship and mission through your prayers and gifts, your study and service, and so fulfill your calling to be a disciple of Jesus, will you? Then let us pray. Father, Son, and Spirit, from the very beginning of creation, you have called people to yourself. Abraham, to walk before you. Israel, to be yours. Disciples, to follow after. Drawing us in to belong to you in the context of communities. And we thank you, Father, that you continue to call people to yourself. We thank you, Jesus, that you continue to make us disciples. We thank you, Spirit, that you fill us with the life of our Lord and make us one. And so we pray for these folks who are joining Timnath, uh, that they would be blessed in being a part of this community. And we pray that together, as we are joined as members of the one body, you would strengthen us continually to give witness to your good news in this place and in this time. So we pray this in Christ's name, and together we say, amen. Welcome. Uh, you will be welcomed in the fellowship hall afterwards, and I would say to you, remember your baptism. Be thankful and know the Spirit is at work in you now here in this context. Sing together. Uh Let us continue to go to God in prayer, praying for the world, for the church, and for our community and one another, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Father, we pray for this world. You desire all nations, all people, in all places to know your loving rule. And you promise in your word to bubble up springs from the water of life in dead places and to wipe the tears from all eyes. So we beg you, Lord, hasten that day. Bring your promises, your tear-wiping, water-giving, death-defeating promises to Ukraine and Russia, to Afghanistan and Somalia, to Buffalo and San Bernardino, to Gaylord, Michigan, to Timnath, Colorado. And as Jesus sent his disciples to the nations, so send us to our corner of the nations this week to represent his good reign and sing the song of salvation here. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for our cities, for this town, and all who live and work here. Your Son has promised to be with us always, even to the end of the age. So as his body, send us now to be present, to be with our community, to give a sign of his presence with teachers ending the year and students going into summer with the sick healing in our hospitals with the friend needing to know love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for the church. As you send your church to teach everything Christ has commanded, give your church faithful hearts to obey his word so that our witness would not just be from our lips, but in our way of life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for one another. As the disciples gathered around to Christ and worshiped, so we have gathered here, old members and new, young and aged. Father, wash us once again this morning by your spirit and the blood of the land. Keep us this week holding to the salvation he has won and help us this week in all the places that we think of in this quiet moment right now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We ask these things trusting that you do hear 
Father, because we pray in the name and the spirit of Jesus Christ, who gathered up all things to himself and taught us to gather up our prayers, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As God has given us gifts of discipleship, the gifts of his spirit, so we present our lives back to God as a gift that he might take it and use it. Let us take our morning offering. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for everything in heaven and on earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head above all. All things come from you, O Lord, and of your own have we given you. Thank you. Amen.
Christ is risen. He is risen because he's been risen in the body. We use our bodies for our final charge and blessing, sweeping our hands to the cross and then to heaven. Join me. All our problems we send to the cross of Christ. All our difficulties we send to the cross of Christ. All the devil's works we send to the cross of Christ. All our hopes we set on the risen Christ, and may Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you and scatter the darkness from your path, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit remain with you and be among you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve. We'll give, we'll give folks just a, a minute to disperse, whoever needs to disperse, but then we'll start our brief congregational meeting as soon as possible. And if you're leaving, just go down the hall for cake.